What's up? Welcome back. In this episode, we're kicking off the advent of code for 2023. This is day one, and we're talking about a trebuchet. This is a you know, contraption from medieval times where you're going to throw a flaming cannonball at a castle or something, right? <laughs> and so we've got one of these trebuchets, and they have a calibration document. And the calibration document has been amended. It's been edited. There's some a PR that was made by a young elf who was just super excited to show off her art skills. And so we've got to go through and figure out some things about this calibration document. So each line of the calibration document originally contained some calibration value. So each of these lines is going to have some calibration value. And we need to figure out what that calibration value was. And so we can go through this example input here and the, uh, the calibration numbers are the first digit that we encounter uh, added with the last digit that we encounter before the end of the line. And that's gonna form a two digit number. So we're kind of just like look from the front of the string for a number. And then we're gonna look from the back of the string for a number. And that's gonna give us two digits. We're gonna squish those together. And that gives us the calibration value for a given line. Then we're going to take all of the calibration values for all of the lines, add them up, and we should get some number. So in this example here, we should get back 142. Let's put, pipe open uh, day one Ruby here and just say that our like uh, our input is going to be this this thing. So we'll use a little here doc here, and we'll say that our input is this. Now we're going to say like input dot each line do line. So again, like each line is going to have some calibration number. So maybe we'll say uh, calibration number is line. And for now, what we can do is scan for digits. So what we want to do is find digits that are in that line. And we need to figure out, we don't want to just sum up all the digits in the line. We kind of need to like pull off the first one and pull off the last one. So if we scan for digits in the line, what does that give us? So let's just P calibration number for now and see what that gives us. So in the bottom, I'm using the exclamation point and Ruby to run this Ruby, uh, this Ruby file directly here from Vim. So in day one from this input, our first line gives us one and two. The second line gives us three and eight. The third line gives us one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And the last line gives us seven. Now, in the case of seven, it's a little odd. If we have a, a single number that we found from looking from the front and the same number when we looked from the back, then we want to combine that number with itself. So, or like we're going to put two sevens next to each other to give us the number 77. Um, so what we really want out of this is one and two, three and eight, one and five, and then seven and seven. So let's see if we can get this to behave as we expect. We actually don't want to map to I right now. We just want to like grab the digits off and then we're going to combine them later. So what we can do is we can scan the line and get back this calibration uh, number. Uh, actually, so by scanning the line, we're going to get some, uh, some array and let's just map that uh, or how do we want to do this? Okay. So this is gonna be like um, uh, digits, okay? And then we'll say digits dot first plus digits dot last, assuming that this is an array of strings. And let's just see what this gives us, okay? We don't actually want it to add the numbers. We want it to give us these numbers back. So 12, 38, 15, 77. So 12, 38, 15, 77, that looks good. So now what we want to do is we actually want to like take the string concatenated version of that and convert that into an integer. So that should give us number values for each of those. That's great. Now what we want to do is we want to sum those up. So I think what we can actually do maybe is just say dot sum. Is that true? Uh, nope. Okay. Uh, so um oh maybe we have to put it at the end dot sum is that going to work uh no oh because we're not actually printing anything with the result so we'll take our result here and we'll p result oh uh, that's way too big three four five seven so we're expecting uh 142 
So some, this seems like it's not actually working as expected. Hmm. Oh, because each line isn't actually mapping. So we'll do dot map. Okay, now we get 142. So by adding map here, each line is going to like return an iterator and we can just throw dot map onto the end of the iterator so that the result of calling this block gives us back an array and that array will contain the return values from the block. And then we can call dot sum. That gives us a result back, which is 142. So that is the example, the answer for the, uh, the input example. Now we want to sum up all the values in our test input. So down here, I can get my puzzle input. I'll just grab all of this. And to keep things easy, I'm going to put this inside of the same file in the end. And what we can do is instead of saying uh, input dot each line, we can say data dot read lines and rerun this. And we get the value 55002, which was my puzzle answer for part one. That's it. That's part one. We've solved part one. Now, part two, your calculation isn't quite right. It looks like some of the digits are actually spelled out with letters. Oh my gosh. Okay. So sometimes the digit is like a digit that we would expect one, two, three, four, five. And sometimes it's spelled out O N E T W O T H R E E. So they give us exactly the ones that we can expect here. And what we want to do is look at some of these calibration lines now. And now we have to figure out a little different approach here. So let's just comment this out. This is part one. Okay. So now for, uh, for part two, what we want to do is maybe something very similar here, right? Um, but we can't just scan for D, okay? Because instead of scanning for D, we need to scan for also potentially um, the words that represent those digits. Uh, so let's just see if we can get this, uh, if we can get this working. So for our input now, so this is like input part one, um, and then we're gonna have input part two. Actually, let's put it down here. Okay. All right, we'll just comment out part one entirely. Okay, so for part two, we've got some new input. So our new input looks like this. Okay. All right. And here we can just say uh, input dot each line. And we want to do something with those lines. And so for now, let's just P digits and see what we get. Okay. So in some cases, like in the second line here, eight W O three, we aren't getting any result because none of those are actually digits. So one thing that we can do is add in here, like we want either digit or the word one or two or three or four or five or six or seven or eight or nine. I think that should do it. Okay. So now we've got sort of, uh, some results that look good. Um, and technically we could now convert these into some number values. So if we look at all of the possible values that we're getting back when we do this scan thing, we could also do it like a match, I guess. So that if we do like match, um, yeah, the, the difference is that scan is going to give us the entire like array of all of those results and match will give us, uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm stumbling because I think what we want to do is we only want to look left to right and find the first instance. And then we're going to want to look right to left and find the first instance. So by, uh, by using scan here, we're going to get back an array of all of the values that match what's in here. But some of those don't actually give us what we want, I think. Um, so for instance, like here where we have one eight, like O N E. E I G H T, like these are overlapping, right? This E is shared by both one and by eight. And so we need some way to figure out, okay, if we're counting from the left, yes, we want the one, but if we're counting from the right, we want the eight. And so we might not get that exactly as we expect. If we look at the final result here, we see one, two, three, four, eight is not in here anywhere. So if we're counting from the right, we would be missing eight. So instead, I think what we want to do instead of scanning for all of the results that match these, I think we want to do match and we only want to get like the first one. So let's just see what that looks like. Okay. So now we have this match data and I think if we do like at zero, 
we'll get back. Okay. So two was the first one, then eight, then one. Okay. That's great. Then what we can do is maybe we build a dictionary that will convert from the word to the number. So maybe we do like uh, word to digit. We'll do one to one, two to two, three to three, four to four. There's like a, some rule in the advent of code for this there that this year that you're not allowed to use AI for the problems. And um, I don't know if this counts. <laughs> Uh, I'm hoping it doesn't count, but also I'm not super serious about the leaderboard and usually I don't solve the problem until well into the next day. So I think it's all gravy. Um, and then maybe zero, I don't know if that, I can't remember if that matters. Okay. So what we want to do now is like take this match or this like word, um, to digit and pass in our thing here. And now we're getting back the, we're always getting back digits now. So that's cool. Um, okay. So the next thing we want to do, I guess this, like, this is only going to give us the first, the first digit. So from the left, this will give us the first digit. So if we're like printing out the line, uh, right above the digit that we're getting. So two, that's two. Eight is eight. One is not in here. Oh, here it is. One. Okay. One, two is two. That's great. So four, we get four. So this gives us both the words and the digits if we encounter a digit. So that's fantastic. Okay, so the next thing we want to do um, is find the last word. And so the way that I solved this was um, was I, I went the other way around. So this is kind of like the, the first and then um, last. And I just... Uh, to, to solve this, I like reversed, I want to reverse the line. So I'm just going to like take the entire line, flip it around backwards and then search through. And when I'm searching through, um, each like numeric digit is going to be the same. And so, um, for the words though, instead of O and E, I'm going to do, um, E and O, right. We're just going to do the words and we're going to spell them backwards. So instead of going through and like manually reversing these, what I'm going to do is pull all of this out and we're going to just replace this using the keys that are in our word to digit uh, dictionary here. So we'll just say word to digit dot keys. And then here we can do word to digit keys and then we'll just do it uh, them in reverse. So word to digit dot keys dot map. Uh, reverse. Okay. Um, what is this? Uh, unused variable results. Oh gosh, there's so much, so much messiness. Okay. And then at the end we should get like, uh, some first plus last, and that's going to give us a two character string or it should. And we'll just like, see what this looks like. Uh, first plus last undefined for nil class. Okay. Oh, right. Because if we get a match. We also need to reverse the match and still sad. Okay. Um, oh, and in, we also, okay. So for our regular expression here, we also need to join on the pipe operator so that it's like a bunch of ors. Uh, so we'll do that in both cases. Um, okay. Let's see what we get. All right. Look at that. Okay. So now we have a bunch of uh, sort of looking number looking thingies. We'll convert those into integers and we get back a bunch of integers dot sum. And now we cross our fingers and hope that this matches our example input. So 281 is matching 281. Awesome. So can we just swap out input dot each line for data dot read lines and run it again? 55093. 55093. Boom. Okay. Awesome. So. That was fun. Uh, and sort of, I don't know. It's a little hacky, right? We're doing some, a, bu a bunch of reversing. There's also like, uh, we could probably cache some of this, like, so we don't have to do all this string reversing. Um, several times we can probably do like, you know, uh, key or like, um, words is word to digit dot keys. And then our words is words dot map reverse that way we only do it once and then we could say this is words and this is our uh, our words 
and now we should get the same result, and we do. Uh, anything else that we could probably clean up in here? I don't know. I mean, it's this is relatively ter like concise. Um, another way that you could do this is sort of like do a an an iterator from like zero dot up to the length of some line, um, and then inside of that maybe you do like uh, three times do, and then you try to figure out like okay. Give me all of the th between three and five length words, and you sort of have like this sliding window where you check each of the words against um, against the uh, uh, the keys that are in word to digit. But I think this is cleaner. Just even though it's using regular expressions, which is kind of hacky and isn't going to go very far, it feels like a good enough solution for day one. So thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.